what really, really changed things is DeepSeek coming out a few months ago. So this model was from China. Very unexpected because nobody thought China was doing any sort of like really high end AI stuff because America actually has sanctions to prevent them from buying the best GPUs to prevent them from being able to develop the best AIs. So not only were we trying to stop them from selling it, also it just felt like America tech companies and a little bit in Europe are the dominant ones that are leading this. It's an unbelievably complex stuff that requires really smart people and tons of resources to make critically. And we're totally fine. China's not, and then just boom, this thing drops and it's open weight. And what that critically means is that anybody could download it and run it on their computer for free. Anybody can do that. So if you are a company that before was paying ChatGBT and you're like, look, I'm going to pay a couple million a month to use your service for my program. We're doing AI customer service or we're doing AI analysis of our business or whatever agents, you know, all the things that are growing. Suddenly this new competitor comes onto the market and it's not just that they're like, hey, we're cheaper. It's like you can download this and use it for free in whatever way you want. We don't even have the ability to stop it from running. Once you've downloaded it, it's yours forever. We can't stop it. And this completely blew up the sort of ecosystem that was happening. Uh, I mean, there's two things I want to say about that. One was about the the sanctions, because I think there's an interesting story today that's like a little yeah. diversion. So but, we'll get into like how it was made as well. But yeah, you can okay, get so, off. Okay, so, you know, as he was saying, uh, NVIDIA high, high-end GPUs are banned from sale in China because they don't want them to be catching up in the AI race. Yeah. So NVIDIA, in response, and I worked there when they were doing this, made a nerfed version of their H100 that is like, Slightly worse. You know, it's just worse on every aspect so they can sell it in China. And then just two days ago, that version, or maybe even yesterday, this could, this could be like very recent by the time you see this, uh, got banned. That version, after they made it, before they got to sell it, but after they spent billions making it, got banned. And so NVIDIA stock yesterday, huge drop, huge drop because that was very expensive to make and now they can't sell it again. And so there's becoming this problem where even the nerfed ones are getting banned. But because they're getting banned, China is now finding ways of doing it either with smuggled H1 GPUs, H100 GPUs, which is happening, but also without them. It's so like uh, um, Chinese semiconductor companies are getting their own, they're catching, they're not, they're not there yet, but they're catching up in a way. So it's becoming this weird war over that. But that was, that was high point. I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah. yeah. So it gets into the, yeah. so it's relevant. It's about yeah. the development of this thing. So imagine that you are these AI companies the past couple of years, you're riding high, you have ChatGPT, it's this crazy ass product. You have whatever it is, like 100 million people paying for it or using it every, I forget the exact numbers, using it every month. It's, it's this smash success and the entire stock market has massively inflated over the past few years, mostly from tech companies investing in AI. That's like most of the stock gains the past couple of years. And we're all talking about how great the stock market is, largely based on all of these companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, everybody just going massive, massive, massive all in on AI. Yep. Um, and then imagine you're one of those companies, you're, you know, you're Sundar Pichai at, at Google and you've told your entire company to focus on AI. And then this model drops from China. And again, it's not that a Chinese company came out and said, we're going to come out and offer it for $5 a month. They said, it's free. You can download it and use it on any PC, on any computer. We, ha we don't even have control over it. No, it is open weight. And what that means is we don't know how it was made. So again, they're giving us the finished product that you can run on your own computer. ChatGPT, you can't run on your own computer. There's no way of like having it yourself. If you are a company that wants to start using AI, you are basically dependent on ChatGPT to give you access, to set the pricing, to do everything. But now if you want to do it, you can set up your own server farm, run DeepSeek on it, and just use that entirely. And the only thing you pay is energy costs. Essentially, it's free. And even if you use their API, which is basically you are using DeepSeek's servers, that's 1 20th of the price of yeah. ChatGPT. So either it's free if you run it yourself or it's ridiculously less expensive, 95% so yeah. less yeah. expensive. I want to jump in on that one. Yeah. Yeah, because that's where the real, because I've used both now. I try, you know, I, I would use it to summarize articles or to quiz me or whatever. And I tried DeepSeek for a while because on the benchmarks, it did as good or in some cases better than ChatGPT. I was like, yep. and I found qualitatively pretty similar. But I found myself drifting back to ChatGPT. I liked the interface. There were some things that were cleaner. The, the voice thing, they have some new features. You know, they're, they're updating. But I'm kind of price insensitive in that it's a business expense for me. I can spend right. a little bit more on it. Here's where I think, that's the area that I think this really shakes up the business model. Yes. Is that like, for an average consumer, they probably, they, they trust ChatGPT. It's the new Google for them. They might keep using it. But if you're a company that's a a middleman company built on top of the AI layer. Yes. So an example I use is like, there's like character AI where you can like chat with Genghis Khan or you yeah. can chat with 
But basically what that's doing is it's a fancy portal, but it just calls back to ChatGPT. But they have to pay ChatGPT a fuck ton of money. So if I spend, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are like trying to get AI boyfriends. <laughs> there's girls that are like chatting with their AI boyfriends. They spend $150 a month on character AI to talk to their AI boyfriend. They have to then give $100 of that to ChatGPT. So they have to make a small profit. If they build the exact same thing, but on the deep seek layer, yep. they get to keep all of the profit yep. and only a little bit goes to deep seek if they use their servers or not. So that's the big change. And that's where all of the money that these AI companies were hoping to make might evaporate. Because like as yes. a direct search engine replacement, yeah, you might go to ChatGPT, but right. for all the things that are gonna get built, like for example, you know, we might get a world where the next Grand Theft Auto 7 has AI voiced characters that's built on top of something else. If it's an open source model, then Rockstar keeps all the money. But if it's ChatGPT, right, and that's that's what they were. That's where all this inflated stock market came from was these future profit expectations that are not yes. possibly shown. That's my that's yeah, my, and it's I worth guess. reiterating. So the AI companies that have been making all this stuff that's been going on, where every week you're like, there's this new model from whatever company. All of them are operating at an absolutely massive loss. They are basically spending billions of dollars every yeah. year in order to train these AIs, because it takes, you know, they're, they're taking tens or hundreds of thousands of GPUs that are running these massive training cycles with massive quantities of data. They're paying like the smartest people in the world. So this costs unbelievable amounts of money. And the whole industry is predicated on the idea and the hope that, yes, we're blowing tens of billions right now, but it'll pay off in the future, right? Like this is the future. Everybody's going to be using AI for everything. Uh, but if then China drops this model, which is free, Again, all of your customers, like, why would they use your product, right? Yeah. If it's, if even if it's it has 95, to be so much better, it has to it, be so it much can't better, just be like a little better. Yeah. And so that is, I think, the really interesting question with open source. And this has really been going on the entire time AI has been happening. It was a big deal a, a last year when Mark Zuckerberg came out and randomly dropped like Meta Three is out, and and uh, or sorry, excuse me, Llama Three is out, which was his open weight model, and that alone was whole was like oh shit, Mark Zuckerberg's strategy is basically to just set fire to the other companies by releasing their models for free. Because the instant you do that, everybody else has a harder time competing in the market. DeepSeek was that, but like on crack. So it was just this insane level of competency and insane level of being cheap. And so that is the question. So now I want to open up. And there's a lot of interesting angles of, of this going forward, which is like, one, how if you are OpenAI, which is a company that, again, is spending tens of billions of dollars a month, or not a month, a year, um, but you're, you're starting to make more money, but open source models are going to keep releasing. How can you ever stay competitive and recoup all this investment, right? Microsoft is giving them tens of billions of dollars. How are they ever going to make that money back? And if they can't, and if it doesn't seem like they're going to, are they going to stop investing in all of this, right? And so there's things that you you mentioned, like right now, OpenAI is still doing well because they're trying to basically make features and models that are so much better or so unique compared to what DeepSeek does. So they have like this deep research feature. Incredible. Yeah, their it advanced, is really nice. Yeah, their advanced voice mode is incredible. I've been using it like every day nonstop to like learn things, practice, a, learn a new language, whatever else. Uh, operator models where it's going to be controlling your computer or remembering your conversations is a mm -hmm. new one where... Sam Altman has talked about how he wants the AI to really like get to understand who you are and then it tailors its answers to you. And the idea, like, while that sounds maybe creepy, that totally makes sense, right? You would want it to kind of understand <laughs> so your way of know. learning and it would want to know like your history. It would want to make fun of you in yeah. the way that slime does, right? Yeah. Like it would, it would really like Do learn. Do you listen what I want? <laughs> yeah. You want an AI designed to treat this you like slime. This is what Sam wants for me. <laughs> yeah. And he said this and he said, Sam Aiden Altman. has gotten too complacent <laughs> and Chad GBT is now going to, so they've been training it on thousands of slime tweets. I didn't know Sam was talking about me so much. Yeah. Dude, it's wild when the Yard fans come over to the comments like, you're not bullying Aiden enough. You're not, you're yeah. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, like, it, this was the happy episode. We should have yeah. the mean to Aiden episode. Yeah. That's every That's episode of the Yard. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. every episode. Okay. Would, it, would, it, would it be funny if one week you come in, he and I aren't here. It's just Slime it's and not, Nick. <laughs> and we're like, hey, we couldn't make it today. We found replacements. Uh, that would be the, I would they just launch into berating. That you would again? be the worst episode. Oh, I, I, I would be so mad the whole time. I'd be okay. I, I my first yeah. question, because the introduction, oh, wait, let me, let me do one interesting yeah. thing. So, so open AI and all of the AI companies are kind of in a, what the fuck do we do kind of mode the past yeah. few months? Some people are like, well, deep seek is, is an indication that it's going to be even more popular. Other people are saying we need to do more to stop China from doing this. Mm -hmm. um, other people. So like they're taking the sort of national security concern. Uh, other people are saying, oh yeah, we need to like uh, make crazier products that can't just be copied by a, a deep seek type of model. Uh, and then 
very interestingly, OpenAI, who makes ChatGPT, and I mentioned this, I think, two weeks ago, they announced they are making an open source model or open weight model. So seemingly the pressure from DeepSeek has made them start to push towards an open source model, which then in turn makes it be like, how are you guys going to make any money? So, and you know, Sam Altman, the CEO, is seeming, the way he phrased it is like, we're going to release this for the community and, th and that's all great. But it really does make you wonder, like, what is your business plan? Like, I continue to be very optimistic about AI in general, but I, I do wonder, like, dude, how do you justify this? So now, I'm curious. I uh, the One thing I wanted to clarify was the terminology with open weight and open source again. Yes. Because in... In this example, yes. your this situation, you said open weight is something that is specifically applicable to AI. Yes. Is there a step further than this where an AI company or project could be open source? Yes. Like what is the additional layer of benefit if say some random company came out and said, here's our model, yeah. this is open source, not open weight. Is there any further benefit there? Yes. So, and a few people have done that. Um, for example, Mistral has a fully open source model, but it's much less powerful. They're, they're kind of doing similar to what I mentioned earlier, where they have models that are like open source. And then they're like, but if you pay us a lot, you know, for a yeah. subscription, then we'll give you the premium one that only we have. Functionally, what would be, it, I, I thought your example of customer service at scale was really good. Like the difference between what I could do with DeepSeek right now versus yep. paying ChatGPT a bunch to yes. run the customer service for maybe the giant clothing business. So, I run, so here, right? let me give you an example. Let, let's mm -hmm. say you are the customer service company, okay? Yep. And you're like, we want to integrate AI in some way. This is going to be really helpful for our customers or whatever. And you were using ChatGPT and now DeepSeek comes out and you want to use DeepSeek. And you start using DeepSeek and it's much cheaper and it seems to be about as good. But you realize what you really want to do is make changes to it. It still doesn't quite talk to customers the way you want. You want to sort of fine tune it in a way that really can uh, can be uh, tied into your business specifically right. rather than just how it was trained in China. You can't do that because all you're given is basically a model that you can run on your computer. Imagine just like you have ChatGPT but it's on your computer locally. You can run it anywhere for free. But you, right now, when you go to chatgbt.com, cannot change chatgbt. You can't go into the code and say, I want to train you on different data. I want you to focus on different things. Right. I want you to em emphasize your personality in a certain way. You can't actually affect how the AI functions in any way. So open weight means that they've made the thing and you can use it, but you cannot change it at all. Open source means you also have the code and could actually rebuild it however you want. And that would mean that companies could take, if DeepSeek was fully open source, they could take DeepSeek and then customize it to whatever their needs are. Or a new company could come in and they're like, we want to be what DeepSeek was. And mm -hmm. two years from now, they take the starting point of DeepSeek's model and iterate on that and then make it some crazy new thing that they release. But they can't do that because there's no code available. We don't know how DeepSeek was made. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense to me. I have maybe a more basic question about how AI works to begin with. Yes. Uh, when my my impression, because you're talking about downloading something like DeepSeek, whatever the open weight model is on my computer, yeah. and then I turn the internet off on my laptop, and then I can still use that model. Yes. Like I can still interact with it. My understanding of AI up until this conversation right now was I interact with an interface and then I type to the AI and then it's communicating with like the data center that trained it in mm -hmm. order to output the response that it gives to me. But how can I do that if the device is not connected to the internet? How can it, I, I guess what my question is with something like DeepSeek and if I've downloaded it and yep. I'm not accessing their servers anymore, mm -hmm. how does it, answer what I need to be answered without the pool of data that it was trained on. Yeah. I mean, basically imagine it is a video game. So, you know, if, if, you know, cloud gaming, which mm -hmm. is the big new thing. Yeah. So with cloud gaming, the whole idea is that the game is being run on a external server, somebody's data server. So you're playing the game or, you know, if you go to Facebook, right, most of the stuff, most of the calculations that are happening are on Facebook servers somewhere. So when you access facebook.com, you're sending a request to their servers. They do all the work. It gets sent back to you with whatever the result is. Um, with, uh, with an open weight model, you can download it and the entire thing is running on your computer. So instead of it being running on the data servers and you're, you're talking to it, it's now running on your computer. The way that actually works is with GPUs. So the okay. reason- This might be a silly example, but say I, I, I'm offline on my computer and I type a really complex math question mm -hmm. into the offline version of the open weight model I'm interacting with. Yes. Will my computer 
you know, take a while and it'll heat up because it's putting a lot of work into answering that question. Like, it, yeah. do, do you yeah. see, like in the same way when I'm like running a video game or running maybe yeah. so, like an editing yeah. software? Yeah. So the way, the way the model is actually run, it, it's not, so w there's the training phase of AI and then what's called the inference phase. Really yeah. what that means is the time where they're making it and training the thing. Yeah. And then once it's done and made, and then it is just to put it simply, a program that you can download and run on a computer. Oh. So once a company like OpenAI finishes making their new ChatGPT model, they have the program just copied a whole bunch of times on their servers. But if you theoretically were to take a copy of that, put it on your own computer and run it, it's now running on your computer. But when you say run on a computer, what that means is it is using a GPU mm -hmm. to do a shit ton of math. And so the, the reason GPUs are so valuable and NVIDIA is so valuable is because fundamentally it's just a lot of linear algebra. It's machine learning. It's a giant machine learning system. And it is just uh, many, many, many millions of, of uh, simple uh, linear algebra equations that are being calculated. GPUs are basically designed for lots of simple math equations. That's why they're so good. So if you have a, cr a crappy GPU in your computer, which you probably do in that Mac. Yeah, relative yeah, to what? It yeah. either wouldn't run well or it'd run ex like it wouldn't run at all or it'd run extremely It might take slowly. a long time for the yes. question to get answered. Because it just literally has to do millions of tiny math equations. Right. But if you then run it on like my CPU at home, which has like a 4080 or whatever, like it'll mm -hmm. be able to run that. It'll be able to do it fairly well. It's still putting a lot of load on your computer. It's needing the CPU and particularly GPU to just do a lot of stuff but it'll do it and it'll calculate it. And it, that model, that thing that was made is basically a giant math equation that will calculate the answer. It just needs a GPU to run on. But if you give it the GPU, then yeah, you're good. Yeah. When I used to work at NVIDIA, I used to have to do all that by hand, all the math equations. All the linear yeah, algebra? Yeah, sent to me and I would have to do it. Yeah. It was a pain in the ass. So I think technology has really <laughs> advanced quite a bit in the it past was, years. <laughs> well, there was a, it was honest work. It was honest work, don't get me wrong. It was good at very good job. They were already automating those jobs away. <laughs> They did.